wonderful time of the year. Thanks for joining us this holiday weekend. There are some great gifts waiting for us in the form of NFL games on Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. And you know we're going to unwrap all of them. It's week 16. You're watching FanDuel TV's More Ways to Win. We are betting the biggest games, handing out best bets, and dropping DFS best value plays as well. Welcome into our Los Angeles studio. I'm Lisa Kearney, alongside my ride or die, our sports betting expert, Dave Weaver. Happy, Happy holidays, Merry Christmas, all the you. things. It's going to be a good week. We got money to make. That's right. Let's get to it, too. The rest of the team ready to go, of course. Super Bowl champ and former <laughs> NFL wideout James Jones on the wow. Zoom. We got Andrew Filipponi bringing it straight. Wrong Look at these guys. From the East Coast. <laughs> yes. Happy holidays, guys. Uh, as you can already see, we've got a great show ready for you. And remember, many of the games this week are Saturday kickoffs. So be sure to lock your bets on the FanDuel Sportsbook app before these games get going. And speaking of, it is go time. More ways to win starts now. <laughs> And we're kicking off the show with a huge NFC East matchup. We got the 13 and 1 Eagles at the 10 and 4 Cowboys. This game Saturday, and the big news everyone's been seeing it play out all week long. Jalen Hurts' status here, the MVP candidate, could miss the game with a right shoulder sprain. If he can't go, backup Gardner Minshew would get his first start of the season. As for the Cowboys, their four-game winning streak ended last week with an overtime loss at Jacksonville. Dallas gave up 40 points. It was their highest total yielded yet this year. So we're going to bet this game. We're going to give it a little litigious twist here. We're in Judge James' courtroom oh, to hmm. debate. David Pony, you each pick a side and argue your case. Of course, Judge James sitting over there will be listening to each of your arguments and will declare his order in the court. Eagles, guys, getting four and a half points after a huge line shift because of that Hurts injury. Many believe he will not be going. He is still uh, a could go. All right, Pony, a lot riding on this game. You're presenting your case first. What you got there? I've lost my clients a lot of money in the Judge James courtroom, so hopefully <laughs> uh, things change. He's in the holiday <laughs> spirit for me. Uh, look, uh, when the Cowboys played the Eagles earlier this year, they nearly won the game with Cooper Rush at quarterback. He threw three interceptions. Now the shoe is on the other foot, and it's likely a backup for Philadelphia. The Cowboys have the formula. They held Jalen Hurts under 200 passing yards. They held the Eagles to three and a half yards per carry. And now you take away the running threat with Gardner Minshew at quarterback. The game really doesn't mean that much to Philly. They're all but locked in as NFC East champ. I think it's a statement game for Dallas. The line movement tells me that the odds makers believe the Cowboys will cover the spread too. Now with the quarterback change, I'm taking the Cowboys. Judge, uh, Pony is wrong, number one. How, what is there to <laughs> like about the Cowboys right now? They, they beat the Texans in the last minute, and then they come back and give up 40 and lose to the Jaguars. With or without Jalen Hurts, this Philadelphia defense has been bringing it this year. Last year, they were 19th in the league, giving up 23.1 points a game. This year, they are sixth. And if it is Gardner, Gardner Minshew, hey, he had 37 touchdowns and 11 picks in his first two years for the Jags, so he can sling it. Yeah, he probably can't run the way that Jalen Hurts can. But my key here is that Leighton Van Der Esch, who's been a starter and the leading tackler for the Cowboys all year long, left last week in the first quarter with a neck injury. He's not going to go. You take out the leading tackler, that's a big deal for this Dallas defense. It's already, to me, been struggling. So... Judge James, do the right thing. And by the way, Pony's dressed so warm, he, I think he lost so much last week. He couldn't the Cowboys the are scoring bill. more than 30 points a game every week, Dave. You Not failed to mention that. Not against this defense. Come on, Judge. Do the right thing. Judge, you're up. What's the verdict? Yeah, well, the, the verdict is in, and I'm riding with oh. my dog, Dave. Yeah. Going against, going against Coach Mike. Going against you know, Coach number, Mike, James. Wow. <laughs> Number number one, Dave, you know, I hope your back is all right because I'm used to standing up there with you, so I hope you're all good as I'm sitting in this chair. But, no, you're right. If this was four weeks ago, Pony, I would have been with you, right? Because when Cooper Rush was in the game, this Cowboys defense was playing at a very high level. 
since Dak has entered the game, this Cowboys defense has said, oh, well, you know what? We got Dak. We're just going to chill now. And they have not really been stopping anybody, especially these last two weeks. I mean, you give up a bunch of points to the Texans, and then you give up a bunch of points to the Jacksonville Jaguars. I do not like the way the defense is trending. And, yes, no Nathan Vander Esch in the middle, right? He was there last time they played. That's why they were stopping the run really, really well. You lead. Your leading tackler goes out of the ball game. This is going to be tough on the Dallas Cowboys, whether it's Gardner Minshew or Jalen Hurts, because the, the, the Eagles are coming with a defense as well. I like the Eagles in this one. And with all that being said, I still think we're going to see Jalen Hurts in this one as well. But I like the Eagles. Yeah, I just I can't get myself to say that it – it is definitely going to be Minshew. Everything you read, they're leaving it with the definitely could possibly. <laughs> Maybe. Just, you know, it could be game time. Um, I would not be surprised to see him as well. They need yes. just one more win to lock up that home field advantage there in Philly. This might not be it, but maybe it is. James ruling in favor of Dave. The Eagles getting those points. It's a big line in my mind, four and a half. All right, let's keep it going here. Another huge matchup, the 8-5-1 Giants at the 11-3 Vikings. New York coming off that huge win in Washington. Giants' first win, by the way, in five weeks was also Saquon Barkley's first game of at least 100 total yards since way back in week 10. We all saw what the Vikings did last Saturday, overcoming that record 33-point deficit to beat the Colts and improve to 11-3. The Giants are getting three and a half points in this matchup. Uh, Dave and Pony, time to argue your case for this game. Judge James is ready, and Dave, you're up first. What you got? Yeah, Judge, I have three pieces of evidence to present to you uh, in this case. Number one, Kirk Cousins has a lot of experience against the Giants uh, over the years playing for Washington. He's under 500 against the Giants in his career, and his teams have only scored about 17.6 points a game. So offensively, he hasn't really solved this Giants defense. Number two, Daniel Jones is my guy as a road dog, 15-5 and five now against the spread in his career. And number three, which team in the NFL has won the most games by a field goal? It's the Minnesota Vikings. They love winning close games. So the fact that I'm getting three and a half, just like last week when they won an overtime by a field goal, if they win by three, I'm still covering. That's my case. Well, the Giants' offense is not going to be able to keep up with Minnesota's. Uh, Minnesota, you've got J J uh, Justin Jefferson, 1,600 yards. Kurt Cousins is coming off a career game, 460 passing yards, four touchdowns. They showed what they could do in the second half is a quick strike offense. Where is the Giants quick strike? Their leading receiver is Darius Slayton with 600 and something yards. Daniel Jones has been more prolific as a runner than as a passer. So really for Judge James here, if he's gonna take the Giants, what he's gonna tell me is that wide receiver play really is not that big of a deal because the Vikings have great receivers and the Giants do not. So if Judge James goes with Dave, then he is a big hypocrite. And I don't trust his verdict. He's not going with me on this one because he hates the Giants. I already know what he's doing. Come on. This early in the show, you want to come at James like that? Uh, all right, James, you heard the arguments. Who won the case? Well, you know the verdict is in, and you heard what Dave just said. I knew he it. He knows yeah. I don't believe yeah. in the Giants. He knows <laughs> that. I am not a believer in the Giants, not a little bit at all. So I am riding with Pony in this one. I am going with the Minnesota Vikings. They just have too much. I, I truly believe the Giants easily should be should easily have four wins, right? They've just been blessed to be able to kick a couple field goals and win some close games. And that's where they're at. But I'm not a believer. And, yes, if you cannot score points with the best of them, you're not going to have a chance, especially when you got to play meaningful games, playoff games, games like this going down to Minnesota. So I'm not a believer in Daniel Jones at all. I do not think he's going to go out there and handle Kirk Cousins. This Minnesota Vikings offense will be too much. They're going to get them boys in a hole, and the Giants are not going to be able to climb out of it. I like the Vikings in this one. Dave, you knew it. Once you, yeah. once you said it, Dave, you knew it. You knew I wasn't going with the Giants. <laughs> you got to know your audience, Dave. I made a good case still. <laughs> you did. You did. Uh, well, Judge James has spoken. Pony wins this case, backing the Vikings, giving those points. Let's get to another matchup with major playoff implications here. we got the 7, 6, and 1 Commanders at the 10 and 4 Niners. San Francisco, one of the hottest teams in the league, winning seven in a row. 
Brock Purdy getting a lot of the headlines, but I really want to shout out this 49ers defense. It ranks number one in total yards, rushing yards, and points allowed. Then you look at the Commanders, currently the last team in when it comes to the playoff picture, so each game is very crucial for them. Pony, getting back in here, Washington getting seven on the road. Pick a side, state your case. What you yeah, got? Commanders are comfortable in that underdog role. I remember Judge James, when he was still uh, a practicing lawyer like us, actually picked the commanders to go to Philadelphia and upset the undefeated Eagles. And I think I'm not calling for an upset here, but what they were able to do in that Philadelphia game was force turnovers. Their defense is aggressive and Ron Rivera, given his defensive tendencies, I think that's going to make it hard on a quarterback and Brock Purdy, who number one is still super young, super inexperienced. I know he has not made a backbreaking mistake yet, but he's also not healthy. He's been on the injury report all week, all of last week, oblique injury, rib injury. It's a big number. I know the 49ers have been great. They've won five straight games by double digits, but the commanders just seem to be comfortable in these games where it's a David versus Goliath matchup. I'm going to take Washington to cover. Judge, I'd like you to strike something from the uh, records earlier. Lisa presented incorrect uh, statements saying San Francisco is one of the hottest teams in the league. No, they're bar none the hottest team. There's no argument there. They're not one of. They won seven straight. And why? This is something that she did say correctly. Their defense is so good. Look, Washington's offense, 25th in the league in scoring. They score about 18.9 points a game. They scored 12 against the Giants. 12. What are they going to score against San Fran? Probably zero, maybe three, six if they're lucky. And look, the Niners are nine and two against the spread their last 11 games at home. Outside of that debacle against the Chiefs, they've won their home games by 20, 15, 13, 6, 16, and 28. They blow teams out at home. Washington is not going to be able to score points. Judge, I rest my case. Yeah, our producer got in my ear and just mentioned uh, accurately, again, uh, the information you presented is, you know, very much in the air because Kansas City and Philly fans could they beg to, seven straight. Could disagree with you on who the hottest <laughs> team is lost in the to NFL. Washington in that um, span. Come all right, fair. James, you know the drill. It's all you. Oh, man, Pony, I hate to do it to you, but Dave, but you're, you're right. going to do it. You yeah. know? And, and, and let me tell you something. You're right on a couple things here. Number one, you're right on the Niners being the hottest team in football. Brock, Tur Brock Purdy's jersey, bang, bang, Niners game. He good day there, got the number one jersey selling right now, playing at a high level. This Niners offense is more explosive with Brock Purdy under the center, more, with, uh, uh, more than Jimmy G under the center. Then you talk about this defense playing at a very high level. I mean, if they go and dang their skunk Tom Brady at home, what do you think they are going to do to Taylor Heineke? And you're right, they, they scored 12 points against the Giants. And you're talking about you're going to go on the road to where the Niners play really good football and be able to put up some points against the Niners. I don't see it happening. I think the most points they get is possibly 10. I think this is going to be a beat down by the San Francisco 49ers. The yeah. verdict is in. I found an appeal. Right, Pony? I don't know what you are thinking. Like I you guys are leaving down. out the fact that the, the <laughs> commanders got screwed by the refs. That was a touchdown, James. You saw that. He checked with the ref. He was lined up properly. It should have been 20 points. Oh, and the P.I. That, that, is, that, is, that is very true, <laughs> but it's still not the Niners defense. <laughs> That's right. All right. At the end of the day, Dave wins the third case, taking yes. the Niners, giving the points. Congrats to Dave. Great match. You're a square, Dave. Going <laughs> yeah. to be an awesome week 16 of games, no doubt about it. And, of course, you can bet those games on the FanDuel Sportsbook app. And remember, all the games we just talked about are on Saturday this week. And a quick reminder about a special promotion that allows you to get up to $1,000 back if you don't win your first bet. Yes, you! Right now, new users, download the FanDuel Sportsbook app, sign up for your new account using that promo code right there on your screen. More ways 1,000 after you sign up. Just place your fir first bet with us. And if you don't win, you'll automatically get your stake back in free bets. It's that easy, so download the app. Sign up using that promo code MoreWays1000 and play today. And you know we are just getting started here on More Ways to Win. Coming up, Dave right here is turning a couple bucks into a pile of cash. Yeah. Don't miss his Week 16 Big Payday Parlay Plus. 
We're giving out the best into DFS value plays for this week. We're coming right back. And we're rolling on here on more ways to win in every matchup. There's an underdog and there's a favorite. But how do you know which one to bet? Well, the answer is both. You just need to really tap into some smart experts who will tell you where the best value is on the board. So let's fire up our traveling circus here as we roll out this week's dog and pony show. And as we do every week, ponies playing the part of pony. And our special guest, Chad Millman, will be bringing the dogs. Always great having Chad with us, Chief Content Officer of the Action Network. Happy holidays to you, Chad. And all right, guys, let's do this. Chad, you went 2-0 in this segment last week. Congrats nice. there. Yes. Um, so hold on to your picks for this week. I'm going to start with Pony. Give us your first favorite favorite for week 16. Lisa, can Kansas City cover a spread? I mean, this is bugging me. They've got one of the worst against the spread records in the NFL. There's a big number every week. They have a hard time covering it. I'm picking them again. I'm going back to the well. Seattle, they look like they're running on fumes now. Geno Smith, yards per attempt down to five against San Francisco. He looks like a little bit different quarterback with the Tyler Lockett injury there, which is affecting things. Kenneth Walker, not completely healthy. And as far as KC backers go, they're better at blowing teams out at home. Their last two home games have been double digit wins over the Rams and over the Jags who are now red hot. So it's a big number. But I think, come on, Kansas City, one time here for Lisa and for me, cover a big spread. Yes, it's it's your Christmas gift. They'll wrap and right under the tree it goes. Um, thank you, Pony, for your belief in my Chiefs. All right, Chad, give me an underdog that you like this week. All right, everybody has been trying to badmouth the Green Bay Packers all season long, but we're starting to see this team find its rhythm offensively and it's the perfect time to do it as underdogs against the Dolphins. This line actually opened at five and a half. The wise guys loved it at five and a half. They bet it down to four and a half. I would play this game all the way down to three and a half. Offensively, since week 10, Green Bay, number two in DVOA on offense. That's a fancy way of saying all the numbers added together. Say this team is playing really well on offense and also Defensively, they're not great against the run, but they're very good against the pass, especially their defensive secondary. We saw Zaire Alexander made the Pro Bowl last night. He is a guy who will be able to jam the Dolphins receivers, which is what makes them struggle. We have seen defenses, opposing defenses, play better against the Dolphins the past few weeks when they are able to do that. And I will say this, this season, dogs between three and 10 points, covering it at a 58% rate against the spread. That is the best through 15 weeks that we've seen in 20 years. All right, great stuff, Chad. Thank you. Pony, we know you like the Chiefs. Who else do you like this week? I'm going to go with the Ravens. I think that score, their, their output, the three points against the Browns and that Saturday night game in Cleveland, very misleading. They squandered opportunities in the red zone. Tucker didn't make his kicks, which is you know, a rarity. It almost never happens. And here comes Atlanta. This is going to be Desmond Ritter, the quarterback's first road start here. Uh, the, he was under 100 passing yards uh, against New Orleans. They want to run the ball. That's been Atlanta's MO all year. And the Ravens defense, one of only three defenses in the NFL to hold teams under 100 rushing yards per game. A dominant run defense, especially now that they have Roquan Smith there coming over from the Bears. So I like the Ravens to remind Desmond Ritter and the Falcons that the NFL ain't easy. And they, I think they will pull away and blow out Atlanta Sunday or Saturday afternoon. All right, great stuff, Pony. Chad, another underdog that you like in week 16. Look, look Pony's right. The NFL is not easy. And we see it every single week when we've got these massive favorites going against these teams that nobody thinks are very good. We've talked about this the past three weeks on this show. I've asked people to hold their nose and bet on big underdogs. We did it for the Rams. We did it for the Broncos. We did it for the Bears last week. We're going back to the well with the Bears this week against the Bills. I've said this each and every week. When we have teams that have a winning percentage of 25% or less, playing against teams that have a winning percentage of 65% or more, late in the season, the numbers are inflated. The bookmakers are begging you to take the bad team. This is covering at a 60% clip 
the last six seasons. That's on a data set of more than 200 games. I'll say one more thing. We got a lot of brainiacs at the Action Network. We dive deep into the data. We created a metric called the luck rankings. It accounts for everything that defies expectations in a game. Do you not score in the red zone? Do you have an excessive number of turnovers, plays that are against positive expectations? This is the biggest delta we have all week in terms of luck between the Bears and the Bills. When that happens, it's an autoplay on the underdog. Interesting insight there. Um, all right, Pony, let's quickly recap your two favorites, and Chad, we'll get back to yours. Uh, you like the Chiefs giving the points to the Seahawks. You like the Ravens giving the points to the Falcons. And Chad, what you got for your underdogs? Here's a look at your dogs again. Chad went 2 and 0 oh last week. This week, he likes the Packers and the Bears both getting points on the road. Awesome stuff, guys. You can bet these dogs and favorites right now on the FanDuel Sportsbook app. And you can get more of Chad's insight by listening to the Favorites podcast wherever you get your podcasts. Also, make sure to download the Action Network for expert picks, live scores, and stats. You heard Chad talking about his staff there. And bonus drop real quick, must read Chad's The Odds book, which I'm currently reading for the second time through. Chad, awesome stuff, my friend. And great seeing you every week here on this show. All right. Time now to turn a little bit into a big win. Dave, America's new favorite segment, Dave's Big Payday Parlay. You know how much I love this. A $20 wager, you're going to turn it into thousands for us. What do you have here for week six, 16? As I uh, also tell everybody happy holidays, what do you have for us? What's under the tree? We are going to uh, bet eight teams to win. They all have to win. There are no spreads involved here. This is all money line. And one of the trends this week is cold weather games and one of them that I'll start with is Cleveland it's going to be about nine degrees windy we've got a dome team coming in I don't think the Saints are going to handle that weather so I'm going to start by putting the $20 on the Browns when that wins we bet it all on the Carolina Panthers look this is a very big game for them they have the Bucks next week if they win and beat the Lions they're basically setting themselves up to, to win that division if they can beat Tampa next week as well. So this is a very meaningful game for Carolina. I think they pull off the small upset. Uh, third game is going to be New England. You know, it's, it's been a very grueling stretch here for the Bengals. I have a feeling that they're going to lay an egg in this game. They play Buffalo next week. I think New England comes up strong at home, plus 138. We're kind of tracking the parlay. We're almost up at 8-1 to one odds there with just three games. Fourth game is going to be the Ravens. Same thing. Take that dome team, bring him into the cold. Atlanta's not going to be able to handle that. So that's four of them. The fifth team, San Fran. This is what we call the free square on the bingo card because the Washington commanders are not going to be able to go to San Fran and score any points. So now we're up to almost $300 for our $20 parlay. Here's my biggest upset of the week, plus 190 or plus 162 on the Philadelphia Eagles to go into Dallas and win that game. 13-1 and one and they're an underdog. I don't think so. I think they're going to pull off the upset in that game. That leaves two more. Vegas coming out of the Dome, going to Pittsburgh. That's not going to be an easy thing to do on the 50th anniversary of the Immaculate Reception. So give me the Steelers. Very small favorite there. And then we're going to end it on Christmas. There's going to be a little present under the tree that Baker Mayfield's going to open for us. The Rams beating the Broncos. That makes that pay about 3000 So... $20, those 18 wins, we pick up $2,900, $49, Lisa. Yeah, so everybody can go ahead and pay off their uh, credit card bills from all the presents they bought Come all on, December Baker. long. Um, I love this segment. That's so much fun. And look at those odds skyrocket right there with that $20 wager. Great stuff by you, Dave. Um, hey, tail Dave, create your own parlay, win big. You can do it right now on the FanDuel Sportsbook app. Be sure to use that, that promo code MoreWays1000 if you're new to us. And uh, you can get those $1,000 back in site credit if you don't win your first bet. And you can also get in on the fun with Daily Fantasy. One-stop shop right there on your phone. FanDuel has a bunch of DFS contests live right now where you can win thousands of dollars on FanDuel.com and, of course, on the app. So how do you give yourself an edge here in these contests? Well, you got to find the best value at each position. So we bring in a ringer each and every week. Jim Sonis is a senior writer and analyst for Number Fire. He has done the research for you. Jim, who are your best value plays here for Week 16? 
Thanks, Lee. So with all the bad weather on this slate, we got to be a little bit picky with our value plays, but I think we got three pretty good ones here after accounting for the weather. That begins a wide receiver with DJ Chark coming in at $5,700. Chark facing off of the Panthers. Predictable bad game last week for Chark. Going up against the Jets, really stout outside corners. Here, it's still a tough spot, but not as tough. And Chark has a 43% share of the Lions' deep targets in the full games he has played this year. So Chark, I think, back on the menu for the Lions this week. At quarterback, I actually don't mind the idea of spending down for Gardner Minshew at $6,100. Minshew, a big downgrade from Jalen Hurts, but still a capable passer with a great infrastructure around him. A tremendous offensive line, really good pass catchers, and playing indoors. So I think there's enough there for us to go at Minshew if you want to say, salary a quarterback finally a running back i love kenneth walker the third coming in at 6900 dollars walker could get more targets this week with no tyler Lockett for the seahawks and he had a pretty good role despite his ankle injury last week now no practice for walker on tuesday but likely just maintenance so kenneth walker the third we know will be involved the seahawks may be able to put up some points so kenneth walker the third a really fun way lisa to get a lot of volume at running back without spending a lot of salary it's what we're always looking for. Thank you, Jim. Set your lineups on FanDuel.com. Follow Jim on Twitter as well, at Jim Saunas. Check out his Covering the Spread podcast wherever you get your podcasts. Coming up next, two of the AFC's top teams have very tough tests this week. Our experts break down which side you should bet in the Chiefs and Bengals games and why. Plus, our present to you this week, best bets you can take to the bank. Our betting experts are coming in hot next. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. We're all about competition on this show. We're not trying to play nice around here. So we're going to fire <laughs> up our next debate where our experts go head to head with our ex player. This is where we break down a couple of biggest matchups ahead of us in week 16. Both of our seasoned betting experts will debate this game with James, nine year NFL vet, Super Bowl champ. I keep saying he just needs to wear all the bling on the show. Uh, we've got two wildly different perspectives going at it here. So we're going to have a little fun, guys. We've got a few games ahead of us. Uh, and we're kicking it off with our our expert versus our ex-player battle with the 11 and 3 Chiefs hosting the 7 and 7 Seahawks. Chiefs running back Jarek McKinnon, he stepped up the past two weeks. We've seen him doing his thing. Four total touchdowns, 256 total yards in those games, including the game-winning 26-yard touchdown run in overtime last week. Don't get me started on that game, but let's talk about Seattle. They've lost four of five to fall one spot outside of this playoff picture in the NFC. Dave, the Chiefs are giving 10 at Arrowhead. How do you see this one? Well, the way I see this is that even if Seattle loses this game, they get two home games to close out the season, one against the Jets and one against the Rams. If they just tank in this spot and they win their last two games with Washington most likely losing to San Francisco this week, they're not really going to lose any ground. If they can win their last two, they're still in good shape. Tyler Lockett had surgery on his hand, but Pete Carroll said that he might be available next week. He's definitely out this week. So I'm thinking there's a scenario here, James, where they know even if they play a really good game, they're still probably going to lose to the Chiefs. Is it possible? You're the ex-player. Could you just save something this game? Admit that you're going to lose and then come out strong in the last two weeks. I'm not saying they're going to totally lay down, but I can see them not going 100 percent in this spot. Dave, you play to win the game every time. Yes. All right. <laughs> every single time. I, I mean, and they know they're outnumbered, but I mean, they're going to go out there and they're going to try to win the ball game. I promise you right now, the talk in Seattle right now in their team meeting is we are going to go out here and beat the Kansas City Chiefs and upset these boys and get back on track. And you got to believe that they, they're going to think like that because they have been a solid football team. Yes, they have been playing bad football. They're on a losing streak and all that good stuff. But at the same time, this team has won some big games this year. Geno Smith is a pro bowler playing at a high level. So they're going to think they could come in there and win their game. They are going to get beat up. We know that. The Kansas City Chiefs are one of the best teams in the National Football League. They are at home. They are probably mad that they're coming off a tough win against the Houston Texans where they didn't play their best football. It's, it's going to be a beat down by the Kansas City Chiefs. Seattle is in trouble because I don't know if they're going to get past the Jets neither. And I'm hoping a little bit, Dave, because my Packers still got a chance to get in there. So I don't want to see any NFC team on the bubble win. 
<laughs> We're going to just have some new t-shirts made for the Seahawks that say, you play to cover the spread. Yes? <laughs> All right, Pony, you're our expert for this next game. A tough road test here for the 10-4 and four Bengals. Cincinnati at the 7-7 seven and seven Patriots. Bengals have won six in a row, including a 17-point comeback against the Bucks last week. Meanwhile, the Patriots have lost three of four, including that crazy lateral loss on the last play of the game last week against the Raiders. I watched that a hundred times and still could not figure that out. All right, Pony, um, let's talk about this game, though. The Bengals are giving three. Yeah, this is a classic trap game for the Cincinnati Bengals because of where they go next. So the Bengals play the Bills next week. That is a hugely important game in terms of seeding and setting things up for the playoffs and those two teams measuring themselves up against each other. Whereas for New England, you know, they've got to get the stink and the bad taste out of just blowing that game out of their mouths. And Bill Belichick, historically, James, in these situations, I remember when that Miami miracle happened, when the Dolphins hit that hook and ladder play to beat them, that team went on to win the Super Bowl. So I don't expect New England to do that, obviously, but I also don't think they'll be deflated. I don't think they'll pack it in. It's going to be awful weather, too. And I think you add that up in New England, not only covers, I think they win this game outright Saturday. Well, Pony, I'm not going to say you're crazy, but you are crazy. And that team was led by Tom Brady to go down there and win the Super Bowl. It's two things here. Number one, have you been watching Cincinnati? Because Cincinnati is clicking on all cylinders. I mean, they can win the game in any type of fashion they need to win the game. Good defense, close game, got to grind one out, they'll win. Blow somebody out, got to score points with anybody, they can do that. I mean, you see them against Tampa Bay, dig themselves in a hole and then come back out of their climate. JoJo Burrow, in my humble opinion, and a lot of people don't have him in there right now, but the way he's playing football right now, the way he has his team playing, he should be in that MVP conversation. James, the they're on to Cincinnati. Going. Remember Belichick said that? We're on to Cincinnati. <laughs> this is their Super Bowl, brother. This is it right here. I understand here. what Bill Belichick is saying, but Bill Belichick's football team is not good. So it's good you saying you own the way to Cincinnati, Bill Belichick, but your football team is not good. I watched it with my own two eyes against the Las Vegas Raiders last weekend. And yes, everybody's going to that very last play, but this, this offense is not good. They cannot create explosive plays. The defense, yes, they are good. They get after the passer. But if you cannot score points with the best of them, you are not going to win too many games. Mac, and Mac, Mac Jones is playing bad football right now. They have two offensive coordinators. That means you don't have one. And that's what you are seeing on the offensive side of the ball. Bill Belichick, Patriots team is going to end up at home for the playoffs. They are going to take a big L against the Cincinnati Bengals. This one here is over. JoJo Burrow is not going to lose this game, mm -mm. and they are going to be riding high to be able to play the Buffalo Bills next week for a big one. All right, for our betters, hopefully they just lose by two or less. Okay, let's see. Let's get to our best bets of the week here. Our experts are giving them out in the form of a spread, money line, and total bet. It's part of our weekly competition where each of our guys gets 100 virtual dollars for those three bets. Both of you guys went two and one last week. Dave had the better wagering strategy. Oh, Check it out. Hitting on his $55 yeah. spread bet on those oh, Giants. My goodness. $25 over bet on the Cowboys Jags game. Make it more than 50 bucks. Look at you. You're hot, Dave. Keep it up. What you got for week 16? Yeah, that best bet has been uh, been clicking. That's why I try to put the most money on that spread bet that I like. So I'm going to do that again. $55 on the San Francisco 49ers to skunk Washington. I think they win that game 27-0. I'm willing to lay the 7.5 points against an offense that's not going to be able to score going into San Francisco. My upset of the week is going to be the Carolina Panthers to win as a baby pup at home small dog uh, <laughs> plus 120 ish I think there you go yeah and then my total so much bad weather throughout the week there's one game where we're gonna have sunny skies and that's uh, in Miami where the Packers seem to be clicking a little bit more than they were early in the year offensively we know Miami has a high-flying offense as well so I'll take the over in that game for my remaining $25 all right, I'm going to start with the Monday nighter. I'm going to take the Colts against the Chargers. Andrew, what are you doing? Did you see them collapse in the fourth quarter? Yes, I did. But four out of their five games under Jeff Saturday have been one possession games. 
and really for three quarters. They had the worst fourth quarter of all time against the Cowboys, where they got outscored by 33 points. But look, I think that they can keep it close against the Chargers. Now it's Nick Foles at quarterback. And we know whenever the Chargers look like they're going to go on a run, here comes the banana peel. So I think the Colts play it close Monday night at home. The money line pick, I'm going with the Saints. I know the Browns are favored. Maybe they'll have some weather against a dome team, but look at what the Saints defense has done. Last three opponents under 20 points, and Deshaun Watson still doesn't look right. In Baltimore, he only had 161 passing yards. I like the Saints to keep themselves alive in the NFC South. And then, Dave, I agree with you on the Panthers, but that's why I'm taking the under in this game because their path to victory is to run the ball and run the clock. And if they win, they've got to keep a high-scoring team to a low number. So I'm going to go with the under in that one, Panthers and Lions. I know I'm not the only one that laughed at that banana peel comment, by the way. (laughs) Uh, All right, some interesting strategies there. We will see which one is the best after this weekend, and we will air the results on next week's show. Hit up the FanDuel Sportsbook now to place your bets before kickoff. And remember, a lot of these games are kicking off on Saturday this week. Coming up, it's Moneyline Moneymaker time. Last week in this very segment, JJ told you the Jags would beat the Cowboys. Yup, Duval County came through. He's got another bold pick this week. next. Stay with us. FanDuel TV is coming right back. Happy holidays, everybody. Welcome back to more ways to win here on FanDuel TV. Thanks for hanging with us this weekend. We are shouting out some of our betting betting markets with rapid fire predictions. Giddy up. Let's go, guys. You know the drill. I give you the line. You give me your pick in 15 seconds or less. Pony, we're starting with you. You're in Pittsburgh Steelers hosting the Raiders. Your boys, they're giving two and a half. Yeah, I like the Raiders in this spot. I do not expect a lot of fans at this game because of the timing of it, Christmas Eve night and the unbelievably cold temperatures. Derek Carr, eight touchdowns to one interception all time against the Steelers. I think Vegas gets the job done. Okay, Dave, Bills, they're in Chicago. Bears are getting eight and a half. What do you think? I don't think the Bills are as good as they were last year. They were supposed to be this team that just throttles everybody week in and week out, and they haven't done that, and I think they're still getting too much credit on the line to be laying eight and a half on the road. No thank you. I I think the Bears can cover that spread. Tony, Baltimore's a big seven and a half point home favorite against the Falcons. That line's still seven and a half. How do you see this one? As they should be. The Ravens' strength is stopping the run. That's all Atlanta can do offensively now with a rookie quarterback under center. The Ravens are third in the league in run defense. They will blow out Atlanta here. All right, Dave, let's talk the Titans. Ryan Tanhill reportedly out for the season with that ankle injury. Rookie Malik Willis getting the start. Tennessee's giving three and a half to the Texans. I'll take the points. You know, uh, the Texans are four and one against the spread their last five in the AFC South. Too many question marks right now involving the Titans. Okay. Great stuff, guys. From quick picks to upset alerts here, we're back on the money line. We're back dropping money line moneymakers for you right now. We're giving them the bet moji treatment. You're welcome, America. Hey, James, the guys will react to your upset pick with the appropriate emoji. Before we get to your pick, though, we have to shout you out for week 15. We had so much fun on the show last week. We're on the text string talking about it. The Jags doing the business against the Cowboys when it's straight up. Uh, Want to give me a big Duval before we make this week's pick? Do. Yes, that was a good, like, you know, 12 views right there. All right. Uh, Awesome stuff. Uh, What do you see here for week 16? Who's our upset pick? Well, I'm I'm hoping that I'm as lucky as last week and I'm right on the money, but I'm going with my Green Bay Packers to go into Miami and upset Tua and the Dolphins. Listen, the Packers are playing the right football at the right time. And they are just finding ways to win. I'm not saying it all looks pretty and just scoring 30 points a game, but they know who they are. They got their two young studs back, the rookie receivers back in Romeo and Christian Watson. You got a really good run game in in Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon. It's cold weather. It's not going to be cold in Miami, but it's cold weather season. The Green Bay Packers are rolling at the right time. They are going to go in to Miami with their playoff hopes on the line and get a big, big W. Easy to make a homer pick, but guys, there you money, go. Money, money. Cash that in. I like the pick, but that's for that Lombardi trophy behind you, James. You stole that from you my Steelers. What's <laughs> Drake and Eileen? You see it? You see it? I see it. 
Yeah, that's a sneaky photo bomb. We're all talking about it in the studio. Like, hey, James, move over a little bit. Let me see your shiny friend behind you. Ah, oh, that's awesome. What a flex. Right? Ah, oh, hey, if you agree with James and the Lombardi behind him, if, hey, if you got your own upset pick ready to go, you do you. Hop on the FanDuel Sportsbook app now and get that plus money before kickoffs on Saturday. Hey, breaking news of the best kind. America's number one sportsbook just got even better. Now you can bet on horse racing directly in the FanDuel Sportsbook app. We are so excited about this. Not only can you place bets on live horse racing, but you can also watch horse races live right from the app. And there's a new horse race starting just about every five minutes. So check out the FanDuel Sportsbook app for nonstop racing, free picks, and easy tutorials to help you learn all about horse racing. So have fun taking in the races and betting the ponies directly in the FanDuel Sportsbook app and learn Learn more at FanDuel.com slash horse racing. We've got you covered with horse racing, sports betting, and of course, daily fantasy as well. Week 16 is here, so let's get you some ringers well worth their high price tag. Time to load up your rosters here. Jim Sonis is back with his can't miss list for week 16. Hey, Jim. Thanks, Lisa. Even with weather impacting a lot of the key games on this slate, I still think there are a lot of studs well worth their high salaries. That begins at wide receiver with DK Metcalf coming in at $8,000. No Tyler Lockett in this game, and Metcalf has been getting a lot of work even while playing alongside Lockett this year. Metcalf is a good enough player where you know he can get open even with increased attention on him. So I do like Marquise Goodwin at 58 as they fill in here for Lockett, but Metcalf well worth the salary and worth prioritizing at wide receiver. And running back, I like Saquon Barkley a lot coming in at $8,500. It's a tough ground matchup with the Vikings this week, but Barkley's getting enough work in the passing game to still make him viable, averaging 4.6 targets per game this year across his full games. This is one of the better games in the slate in terms of the high total, pretty tight spread too. So Saquon Barkley, a fun way to get exposure to one of the more stackable games on the main slate. Finally, I want to get to Christian McCaffrey coming in at $9,400. I do like Derrick Henry too against Houston, but it's really hard to turn down McCaffrey with how much work he is getting getting right now. In the games he has played, the full games he's played, with no Eli Mitchell McCaffrey, it's averaging 146.5 total yards per game and at 69% of the team's total red zone chances. It is a tough matchup here with Washington, but McCaffrey just getting too much work right now to ignore. So Christian McCaffrey, 94 lead, so I think he's back to being the vintage McCaffrey from back in his Carolina days. My man, yes. Set your lineups at FanDuel.com. Follow Jim on Twitter at Jim Sonis. And, hey, another reminder to check out his daily Covering the Spread podcast wherever you get your podcasts. Coming up, we're shining the spotlight on the Sunday and Monday night matchups. Which side should you be backing in prime time? We're going to tell you who and why. That's next. He's going to tell you all about it. I will. We'll be right here. Stay with us. Yes, it is the most wonderful time of the year. Santa Barkley is coming to town, and he's delivering $20 million in gifts this holiday season to all FanDuel customers. Doesn't matter if you've been naughty. It doesn't matter if you've been nice. Santa Chuck has something for everyone. Just check your FanDuel app today through Christmas Day for no sweat same game parlays, casino bonuses, and all sorts of stuff that'll fill you with holiday cheer. It's the $20 million in gifts there. A special thank you to all of our FanDuel customers. So check your app for that holiday pick me up just in time. And hey, happy holidays from our family to you. All right, flip the switch here. We're headed to prime time for our Sunday and Monday night showdowns. Guys, I want to bring you both back in here to get your take on these games. We're going to start with the Sunday night game. We've got the Buccaneers at the Cardinals. Dave, Cardinals QB Trace McSorley gets his first NFL start because, hey, Colt, Colt McCoy yeah. is out uh, with that concussion. He's sitting there in the concussion protocol. Arizona is seven and a half point underdog. Which side do you like in this matchup? Uh, to me, to lay seven and a half with Tampa right now, the way that their offensive line is playing is a risky deal because Tom Brady has is, is not really had time to get comfortable and throw to his receivers and score a lot of points like we're used to seeing that Tampa Bay offense doing. So I actually think this could be a lower scoring game and Arizona keeping it close enough to cover. I like it in the hook as well, plus seven and a half for me. I'll take the Cardinals. All right. Okay, so Pony, sorry, I, I, Pony, I thought you had something to say about that one. Let's get to the Monday night matchup here. The Chargers <laughs> at the Colts. There's a Q QB news in this game as well. The Colts will start Nick Foles under center after benching Matt Ryan. Uh, Indy's getting four and a half points at home. Pony, who do you like? 
Yeah, the Chargers are winning games, but they're winning games ugly. I mean, they needed every second, all 60 minutes, to beat a Titans team that was really without Ryan Tannehill late because of the injury that he suffered. A team that had lost four in a row. So now they go on the road. It's a quarterback change. We know Nick Foles, you know, the guy finds a way to win a lot of games. That's been his uh, calling card as a Super Bowl champion. So I just don't trust the Chargers when the line's four and a half. Maybe if it was below three, but the fact that it's four and a half, no, I think the Colts played well for three quarters against uh, the Vikings. And I think they'll keep this game close and maybe even win it Monday night. All right, our producer, Vishal Mapar, is yelling in my ear that we have just a few minutes left in the show, which means it is time to hit up futures bets on the board right now. And one of the most popular ones, will a team make the playoffs? It's an easy yes or no bet. It's for everyone here. Dave and James, let's start with one of the best stories of the NFL season. The Detroit Lions. They've won six of seven to creep into playoff contention here. The odds for this bet, they're right there on your screen. Dave, yes or no? Do the Lions get into the postseason? I say no. A loss this week would be a death blow to their chances, and I think they're going to lose because I like Carolina. So when they lose this week, it's a big no. That's it? No, no? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Save your money. Put it elsewhere. That is a wrap. Week 16 is here. We've got you ready. Uh, check out all the bets we talked about and so much more on the FanDuel Sportsbook app right now. Thank you for hanging with us. Thanks for hanging with us with every week here. Happy holidays from all of us at FanDuel. Enjoy the games and good luck with your bets.